What's up, Psychedelic Investors? My name's James, and you're watching The Psychedelic Investor, your number one news source for psychedelic stocks. In today's episode, we're going to be going through the fourth quarter financials and conference call that Compass Pathways, ticker symbol CMPS, released today on March 9th. This is super important because it will lay the groundwork for where Compass Pathways is going in the year ahead and give us a really good idea of where the company is standing. And for me personally, after listening to this conference call, it really helped me because I realized that I have been seriously undervaluing the progress Compass has been making. And so much so that after listening to the conference call, I realized that I was wrong about Compass Pathways. They're actually much more exciting than I thought, and after listening to this conference call, I kind of realized now that I put them on the same par as MindMed, whereas before I was putting MindMed much further advanced. So without further ado, we're going to jump into this. There's going to be five important things that we're going to cover in this video that was covered in the conference call. First, we're going to discuss the quarter end and year end financial results for Compass Pathways. Second, we're going to talk about their phase 2b clinical trial treating treatment resistant depression with the proprietary derivative of the psilocybin, COMP. 360. Third, we're going to talk about their efforts to scale up the training of therapists. And fourth, we're going to talk about the uh, efforts to use COMP360 to treat other maladies like uh, anorexia. And fifth, we're going to talk about the, their, their push to find new chemical compounds to treat a variety of different diseases. But first, if you enjoy this episode, please remember to like and subscribe. It will really help the channel and I will really appreciate it and it will help the channel continue to survive. So before we hop into it today, I just want to say it's super important that you guys always watch the conference calls for basically any company that you invest in. During these conference calls, you get lots of insights into the direction and progress of the companies that you really wouldn't get anywhere else. So if you're a serious investor and you really do your own due diligence into companies, you need to be watching the conference calls. Or you can watch a YouTube recap like this one. So buckle up because we're going to hop right in. So the first thing that they talked about in the in the conference call, actually it's a lie, it wasn't the first thing they talked about, but it's the first thing I'm going to talk about in the conference call is their financial results. So the top line number that is the most important thing from these financial results is the fact that they now at the end of quarter 4 2020 have about $190 million cash on hand at the end of the year. So why is this so important? Well, because first of all, you have to understand the, the type of company Compass is right now. They are in the research and development phase. They have no revenue. Everything they are doing is being paid with cash out of pocket. This means very expensive clinical trials, hiring doctors, hiring scientists. It all comes out of pocket. So the fact that Compass has $190 million uh, in the bank is very important. It means that they have enough capital to fund all of their projects for years to come. In fact, in the conference call, they said that they expected the, that this amount of money that they have will be able to fund all of their operations until 2023, even without raising any new capital, although I'm sure they will raise capital as we move on. Uh, getting into the specifics of what was covered in the financial documents, they lost $18 million, or they spent rather would be a better way to phrase it. They spent about $18.8 .8 million in this quarter, uh, which is a loss of $0.52 cents per share for all the shareholders. And for the year, they spent about $60 million or $60.3 million to be specific, which is up drastically from the $19.6 million that they spent in 2019. So we can see that they have tripled the amount of money that they spent in 2020 from 2019. So the clear sense that we get from this is that the Compass is really ramping up. They're ramping up their different studies, they're ramping up their clinical trials, they're ramping up their hiring. This is a company that is in kind of a really important year, a kind of pivotal year going forward. So just taking a step back, again, the fact that they have so much money is really important, especially if we are about to enter a market collapse. If, God forbid, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it is a possibility, if there is a market collapse, uh, we're going to want Compass as its shareholders, we're going to want Compass to be able to continue to fund all of its operations without having to go and raise more capital at a lower price. So again, the fact that they have $190 million, I'm going to keep on talking about this super important very good sign so moving on uh, the first thing that they talked about in this uh, in this conference call is the fact that uh, the the phase 2b trial for treating 
uh, treatment-resistant depression with their de proprietary derivative compound of psilocybin, COMP360, is going very well. And they re-emphasize, again, of course, this is their main focus. It is their flagship program. Uh, very importantly, they say that we should expect results from this 2B trial to be released by the end of this year. Now, this is extremely important, not only for the company, but also the wider psychedelic medicines fa uh, field as a whole, because uh, this is the furthest advanced clinical study of all the public companies in this space. So once we get data on this at the end of the year, we will have a really good sense of where the industry is going as a whole. So they say that they have now expanded this to 22 sites, this trial to 22 sites across 10 countries. And yeah, COVID kind of slowed down their progress a little bit, but they are back on schedule and they plan to release uh, results by the end of this year. Uh, moving on, they talk about their efforts to scale up uh, therapist training. So this is really important because this is gonna be a bottleneck in uh, in the entire psychedelic industry in general, or rather the therapy uh, side of that in general, because it's one thing to create new medicines, but then you also have to uh, train thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of therapists, uh, both in the United States and across the world, of how to do this very specific type of of therapy. And if these people aren't trained, then people aren't going to get the help they need because there is this bottleneck. So one of the important things that Compass is working on is training these therapists. So they say that their training program is going well. Uh, they've set up a formal and scalable method to provide psychedelic support for psilocybin therapy. And they say that this training will continue to evolve and that they are going to be sharing their approach in a collaborative manner and really hope, uh, or rather help, uh, the wider paradigm to evolve. And how they're going to do this is in something they call centers of excellence, which they talk about in this conference call. And these centers of excellence are research facilities and innovation labs, which are designed to bring therapy to patients at scale. So pay attention to the wording here. The idea is to bring therapy to patients at scale. So the first one that they've set up last year is called the Shepherd Pratt Institute for Advanced Diagnostics and Therapeutics, and this is in Baltimore, Maryland, and this is one of the top psychiatric hospitals in the United States. So what is going to be the purpose of these uh, centers of excellence? Well, they're going, to gen uh, they're going to generate evidence to shape therapy regimes in mental health care. So this means they're going to be training and certifying therapists. They're going to be running clinical trials and proof of concept studies, and they're going to be prototyping digital solutions to improve patient experience. So the first thing that this, uh, that this center of excellence is going to be working on is going to be research into their own uh, derivative, which is COMP360. So they're going to be doing this in investigator-initiated studies, which are already underway for both uh, treatment-resistant depression and, importantly, uh, bipolar type 2 depression. So this is super important because it shows that uh, it shows that Compass is not just a one-trick pony. They're not just working on treatment-resistant depression, they're also working on other things such as bipolar type 2 depression. And before uh, really listening to this this conference call, I really did think of Compass more or less as a one-trick pony, a really cool one-trick pony. Don't get me wrong, the trick that they were doing was fantastic. It's like jumping through hoops of fire while the guy's doing backflips on the pony. Great trick, but a one-trick pony. But it turns out that that is not exactly the case. So in addition to the work that they're doing with Shepard Pratt, they're also working with other independent partners and academic institutions specifically to expand the use of COMP360. So in other words, they're looking for other maladies that they can use COMP360 to treat. Specifically, what they are already currently working on is using COMP360 to treat anorexia, chronic cluster headaches, body dysmorphic disorder, and major depressive disorder. So again, not a one-trick pony. They are already using their drug to treat, or at least do the beginning tests for treating, four other different uh, diseases. So this is very exciting, although again, it's in the early stage. But they do say that if these studies provide signals that they require further investigation, they will move them into later stage trials. And of course, Compass is gonna have the exclusive rights to all IP generated in these partnerships. So 
basically what this is saying is that in the very near future perhaps perhaps in 2021 but maybe 2022 they don't really give a date but in the very near future we could be seeing compass pathways having an ip portfolio a clinical trial portfolio pipeline uh, that looks a lot more like mind meds or a ties than their current one does so Moving on, we already got how their finances rock, how their phase 2B uh, trial is going super well, how they're also looking at using Comp360 to treat other issues, and how they're training their therapists. But something else that they're doing that they talked about in this uh, conference call is how many different preclinical trials they did in 2020 and how well they all went. So the top line number that they gave here is that in 2020, Compass Pathways did over 20 new studies that were completed in 2020 looking at a range of different uh, uh, compounds. So this is going to be done in their expanded discovery centers. So we got their centers of excellence and we got their discovery centers. So you got to keep those two different programs kind of separate in your mind. But in their discovery centers, uh, the newest ones are which are in collaboration with UC San Diego School of Medicine and the Medical College of Wisconsin. Uh, these are going to be working to find new psychedelic compounds specifically that target the 5H2, sorry, the 5HT2A receptor, which is a receptor in the brain that has been found in the past to be implicated in lots of different mental health illnesses. And of course, again, Compass is going to be the exclusive licensee for all new compounds generated within these partnerships. And once again, the work is in the early stages, but uh, this is going to allow them to quickly expand their portfolio in the coming years. So that was basically it for the conference call. They gave updates on those five things and then they moved into questions. I'm not gonna go through all of the questions because frankly, some of them were stupid, but we are gonna cover uh, some of the ones that I found to be more informative. So the first question that was asked was in regards to their phase 2B trial, uh, again, which is looking at treating treatment resistant depression with COMP360. And they wanted to know how is it progressing? What's the dropout rate? What's the safety like? What are the expectations? And of course, uh, the answer to this was it's continuing or it's, uh, it's progressing at the, at the proper pace. They still expect it to be done at the end of Q2. Recruiting is going well. And very crucially, there has been no major safety issues at all. It's progressing as it should. Now, importantly, they did caveat this by saying that there has been a number of safety issues, but that these are, quote, expected in this patient population, unquote. And they have been looked at. Specifically, there have been three instances that have come up. But again, they emphasize that there is no regulatory concern. And again, they go with this population. So we don't know exactly what that means. And we're going to have to take them at their word for it, uh, at least for now, until we get some data at the end of this year. But uh, high level, what they're saying is the safety from a safety perspective, their trial is going very well. So the same, uh, the same shareholder had a follow-up question, and they asked about the, uh, the, the new research programs and discovery centers. So they asked, what are they targeting? What's the profile of the new entities? What are you looking to develop? And here they actually handed the mic over to Lars, who is a co-CEO. And he gave a really good explanation. He said, other than their phase, so first of all, let me try to rephrase this question. Basically what the question is asking is other than your phase 2B trial looking to treat treatment de resistant depression, what are you guys doing basically? And he broke it down really well. He said that there are two elements, the centers of excellence approach and the developing novel compounds approach. So in other words, there's using COMP360 to treat other issues like anorexia, and then also developing new and proprietary compounds such as uh, substitutes that have shorter durations. Uh, specifically for these, uh, for these new compounds that Compass wants to create, they want to have something that's like psilocybin or like COMP360, but lasts only like two hours as opposed to the seven-ish hours that Compass now, or that psilocybin now takes, uh, which would again uh, lower lots of barriers of access and make it much more accessible to lots of different people. Something else that they're looking to do in this second type of uh, uh, creation of new derivatives is figuring out how to kind of tailor these drugs to specific ailments. So for example, they might see that COMP360 works well for both, uh, for both anorexia and PTSD, but perhaps you can tailor them a little bit 
to each specific drug or each specific ailment rather because different ailments require different things. Uh, so that was a very good answer uh, and I really enjoyed the, the thoughtful way that it was delivered. Moving on, another important question that was asked in the in the in the question and answer spot of this conference call was can you tell us how many therapists are trained at the moment to perform comp 360 uh, therapy and so the answer to this was there's at the moment approximately 65 therapists trained in this manner and they plan to scale this up to a hundred uh, by the start of the phase three trials which will probably begin at the beginning of next year so i know 100 doesn't sound like a lot but it's still a really big milestone they also asked about when this is ready for delivery so let's say in a couple of years from now once people start actually undergoing this therapy post clinical trials how many therapists do you want to have trained? And they said they didn't want to answer that yet. They're going to wait until they see the data come back before they answer that. But it just shows that uh, this is going to be a difficult problem to overcome. It's kind of my take on it. Training up these therapists is going to be long and expensive, and it's going to be a very slow process. So they only have 65 trained at the moment. They're going to be up at 100 uh, relatively soon. And then after that, they're going to basically, they're going to have to figure out how to train these people faster is kind of my take from it. That's not what they said, but that's kind of my take from it. And then the final question we're going to answer today came from Canaccord, which is uh, actually a uh, not only a main investor in Compass Pathways, but they're also the main investor in Mind Medicine or MindMed. Uh, and this question came, uh, or rather it was about digital technologies. So how is their digital tech going to work? When are we going to see it? When are we going to see data? And the long and short of it is, it's too early yet. We're working on it as we speak, but we can't really give you any details at the moment, but it's going to be important. But we'll talk about it later. They did give an interesting example, however. They talked about how they knew that Comp360 is effective and durable, but how effective and durable is it for each individual person? Relapse is a very real issue when talking about depression, PTSD, whatever, and we can't just look at averages, but rather individuals. So let's just take an example, and this is my example, not their example. I think it's just good to highlight it. Let's say and these are random numbers, uh, let's say that this is effective in 90% of people, but not effective in 10% of people. Great, fantastic number, but we need to know which 10% of people it's not effective in, because we need to be able to, uh, to, to predict relapse. We need to be able to pr provide tools to patients so that they can help uh, prevent their own relapse. So basically what they're saying is we need tech that will allow predictive and preventative care, and that is the core thrust of their digital medicines division that they are going to be developing. And again, we're gonna hear more about that in the months and year ahead. So that's basically everything I wanted to cover from the conference call and the financial documents. But now we're just gonna zoom out for a moment and talk about this high level. Uh, specifically as it pertains to Compass versus MindMed. Um, so again, I said this earlier in the video, but I really underestimated the level that Compass was at, and this really just goes to show how important these type of conference calls are to listen to, because I learned so much in listening to it that I didn't know beforehand. And again, I really now think that Compass and MindMed, they're really neck and neck. Before I really thought Compass was ahead, or sorry, I thought MindMed was ahead, but now my opinion has kind of changed. Uh, specifically, something that I really like to see is that it appears that we are going to be moving into uh, lots of direct competition between the two. So something that was brought up earlier is that Compass is looking to treat cluster headaches with psilocybin, whereas, of course, MindMed is looking to treat cluster headaches with LSD. So because the chemical compounds for LSD and uh, psilocybin are very close, I would expect if one were to work, the other would work, but uh, it would be an open question of which one would work better. And this is a very good thing, like especially if you take off your investor hat and put on your citizen of the world hat. These are unsolved problems, these mental health crises, and we want as many different companies as possible working on different solutions so that we see competition and the best solution wins out. And we see the same thing in digital medicines. Both companies are kind of starting an arms race, I almost see it, to see who can create the best dig digital medicines division. We don't have too many uh, details on compasses yet, but again, they're going to be different. They're going to vary from each other, and we're going to learn which one is better through trial and error, which is a very good thing. 
So again, just closing statements. Uh, this conference call got me really hyped for Compass Pathways, got me much more excited than I was before. And yeah, they seem to be doing really good. Just a very quick recap, financial position, awesome. Phase two trial, proceeding as it should. Scaling up therapists, that's probably the hardest thing for them to do, but the fact that they're tackling this right now is very good news. They're looking to treat more, uh, more issues with Comp360, and then they're also expanding into other compounds soon. So high level, everything seems to be going really good. This was a really great uh, update on the company. It got me very excited. Please remember to like and subscribe. It will really help the channel. I'll see you next time. This is James from the Psychedelic Investor, signing out.